Welcome back to Brandon Farm. Hi, I'm Danielle. If you're new here, this is Brandon Farm. We grow messy over here, meaning that we're not afraid to get in there and just try it. Doing the hard things, having that confidence to start. You gotta start somewhere and it's gonna be messy. And that's kind of the whole point. And my husband is mowing. Growing messy, getting in there and getting messy, ignoring that perfectionism, right? Going beyond perfectionism, searching for anti-perfectionism, okay? In today's video, I want to communicate to you on how important it is to bottom water your plants, specifically your seed starts, all right, and your seedlings. Your seedlings are already having a hard time growing up, right? They're new to the world. They're little tiny, teeny babies. They don't have the strength. So we need to treat them as such. The less force you can put on a seedling, I think the better. One way to do that is bottom watering. Bottom watering is very crucial in my opinion. And honestly, in this little greenhouse, I've done both. I've overhead water and I've bottom watered. I've overhead watered because I ran out of bottom water trays. The bottom water trays, I mean, I use the 1020 trays from Bootstrap Farmer with no holes. When you bottom water something, this is where we're at in the bottom water world right now because I'm waiting on trays to come in the mail. I'm talking about using every single vessel you can find, every tray, every saucer, every lid. I've even put some in the bird bath that you can find to bottom water. So you're gonna take your seedling and you're just gonna fill that tray up, and stick it in there like that. What that's gonna do, it's gonna force your seedlings roots to go down, to soak that water source up from the bottom. It's gonna cause your plants to have a significant root system. And that's what you want, to be able to have healthy transplants when you plant it out. If you're not bottom watering and you're overhead watering your plants, for example, I've already killed it, but I had all of these pots in a mesh tray. In this tray, okay, this mesh tray, all these in here, and I would overhead water them. Number one, it's also not great to have that water sitting on top of your, your leaves. You don't want water sitting on the leaves. Another thing, when you're overhead watering like this and you've got a packed tray full, and you're overhead watering, you're kind of self-conscious, right? Because you're already like trying to hit them all, water them all evenly. Um, in my case, I did not water them all evenly. It may have seemed like it at the time, but it goes to show you this is dry. This did not get watered, even though I watered these last night. Bottom water. I cannot stress that enough. It makes your, your job easier, makes the plant's job easier, it's more consistent. In my humble opinion, bottom watering is best, okay? That's gonna be our new slogan. Grow messy, bottom watering is best. Try it, trust me, grow messy, get in there, start some seeds, bottom water your seedlings. I have trays coming off of Amazon, I wanted the bootstrap farmer trays. Trust me, I did. They're sturdy, they're hardy. All of mine are taken right now or I'd pull one off and show you. Matter of fact, here's one right here. Those both are bottom water trays. It's a 1020 tray with no holes. I did find some on Amazon for like half the price, more, more than half the price. So those are gonna come in tomorrow. So I'm gonna add those to these that are sitting on my bench that I repotted yesterday. These are all the tomatoes that I repotted. Bottom water. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Now, there are some key factors with bottom watering. If your container or your vessel is too deep, okay, and you've got your plant sitting in it too deep for too long, you could potentially drown your plant, okay? You're still gonna have to come back and check on your plants to make sure that they soaked up all of that water that was in there. That's kind of why I like using these Bootstrap Farmer 1020 shallow trays because they don't hold as much water and I'm not gonna drown out my plants. Nine times out of 10, I guarantee you that bottom watering is better than overhead watering. You can try me on that. Comment down below if you bottom water your plants, if you've had success 
bottom watering over overhead watering. Also take a shot every time I say bottom watering. You're welcome. I'm gonna take you around and I'm gonna show you all of my different vessels that I'm using right now to bottom water. Why? Because I wanted to spark an idea for you to be able to use what you have and to make it work for what you need. If bottom watering is the way you wanna go, where there's a will, there's a way. I've got some sitting in a tote lid because the lid is deep and I can put water in there. So I have my cucumbers in my tote lid. I have more cucumbers in all of my terracotta saucers. I have tomatoes in my chicken water bucket. I have tomatoes in a galvanized bucket and I have squash out in the bird bath right now. It rained last night, pretty heavy rain actually. I think we got quite a bit. It woke me up out of a dead sleep this morning. It was hitting the window so dang hard. It filled up my bird bath. Now that bird bath leaks. It doesn't hold water very well for very long, but it's long enough to where it's gonna water all of those squash with rainwater. Now how perfect is that, right? That's another thing I wanna focus on this next year is rainwater collection. I think that's going to be another game changer. Speaking of bottom watering, another way you can water that would be more consistent and useful would be like a drip irrigation system. Okay. Drip line. I do not have that capacity at this time to set up a drip line. Okay. But with my seedlings, since they're all mostly in pots or I have some soil blocks, Bottom watering is what's best for my plants at this time. I've tried the overhead watering. It's not working for me. It's too inconsistent. Bottom watering is just easier. It's better. I've been posting a lot of shorts on YouTube lately. I hope you guys are enjoying those. Don't forget we're over on Instagram at Grow Brandon Farm. I post a lot of reels. Like I said before, I try to stay away from being so educational even though this time I'm really harping on one subject, I'm seeing the results and I can't help but share with you guys, okay? I want you to be successful in your gardens. I want you to try different ways of gardening. And I think that's just one of the different ways, okay? There's, there's lots of ways to water, lots of ways. You can water with your water hose, water can, bottom water, a cup. I mean, you can literally water with anything, right? rainwater versus hose water, you name it, well water, the whole nine, it doesn't matter. Watering your plants is important. Obviously they need water to survive. If you like our videos and you want to see more of what we're doing over here at Grow Brandon, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. As the season goes on, we're going to have so much more content being posted to this channel. I'm thinking in the spring, it's going to be mostly garden related and worms, but chickens fall right into that. Okay. Chickens are doing wonderful. We got 18, sorry, 19 eggs yesterday out of our 22 chickens. That's the most we've ever gotten on eggs. It's insane. Thank goodness we put that market out front because if not, I don't know what we would do with all of these eggs every single day. We don't eat that many eggs, but I love being able to share them with my community. All that to say, I have so many plants growing in here right now. I'm talking like probably 60 cucumbers, over 200 tomatoes. Don't even get me started on the peppers because I haven't even started the peppers yet. I have about 15 or so kohlrabi. I've got squash. I have some sage. I have probably a hundred or so lettuce plants up top above me. I have kale, dwarf curled kale, and I have cabbage and lettuce. So, I mean, I've just, I've got a plethora of plants right now and I'm trying to save them all. And by save them all, I mean water them, fertilize. I'm only fertilizing with my worm castings right now and bone meal and blood meal. Bottom water your plants. I'm telling you, it's going to be a game changer for you. It's easier. It's more manageable. You can visually see if they are soaking up that water or not. Um, you'll be able to tell right away if they're soaking it up. 
that pot will be heavy, it'll be dense, and it'll be dripping. And if you're real successful at bottom water, let me show ya. Okay, if you are successful at bottom watering, you will start to see the roots come out the bottom of your pot. This is a good sign. The good root system. I mean, there's a lot of plants in here. This is my lettuce. That's what you want to see. What I encourage you to do is do your own experiments, okay? You get two separate trays. One with holes and one with no holes. Fill up your trays with your seedling starts. Overhead water one and bottom water another. And you tell me the difference. I'm telling you, you're going to see a difference. So what, what do we have new going on over here? Nothing much. I'm down here in my greenhouse every day laying eyes on my plants every single day, all of my plants. My garden plants that I already have inside, and by inside I mean in the ground, um, in my raised beds, my keyhole garden, stuff that I have that is just a volunteer plant. I'm checking on everything. All the seedlings in the greenhouse. Yeah, that's basically it. So I'm preparing for my worm farm presentation. That'll be upcoming. I'll probably end up posting it here on YouTube. Stay tuned for that if you're into worm farming. I'm telling you, anybody can worm farm. It's so easy. It's very hands-off. And I have so many resources to share with you. Let me take you around and show you my vessels. Because I ran out of the bottom water trays, this is what I'm using. So I have all of these saucers right here. Saucers filled up with water. This is just from this afternoon. And all my plants sitting in the saucers. This right here is a chicken waterer that I'm not using currently because I usually only use these when it gets real hot in the summer. But I have my tomatoes in there, bottom watering. I'm gonna have to ignore my tripod. I'm not gonna move it because I've been fighting with it for like 20 minutes. But right here is the tote I was talking about. So I have this tote that I'm not using currently. It's currently empty. But the lid is just deep enough to where I can set all of these cucumbers in there and I can water in the lid. I have more in saucers right here bottom watering and then right here I have my galvanized bucket bottom watering my tomatoes if we take a walk out here in the garden oh I put up my um, cucumber trellises that's where my cucumbers are gonna go I trim my rose bush but right here since I had all that good rainwater I stuck my little squash plants in there so they can get some good nice clean rainwater in my bird bath i will not leave these in there overnight i will pull them out but at least they're getting something so i'm telling you find anything you can to bottom water your plants plants will thank you all right well i just posted a reel over on instagram about bottom watering the flies in here are insane fixing to get back on the interwebs and reorder my spalding fly predators because they are the best. It's beside the point. I'm talking about bottom watering, I'm not talking about flies. It is lovely in this greenhouse right now. It's sitting about 72 in this greenhouse and it feels amazing. I mean, I don't mean to harp on you guys about bottom watering. I feel like I'm kind of me and mean. I don't mean to be. I don't even know where to go with this video. I'm limited on time because I'm running out of daylight. But I wanted to take the opportunity to express you how I feel about bottom watering your plants and really this could probably pertain to more than just seedlings it could pertain to your house plants you know some house plants don't like to be watered overhead they like to soak it up from the bottom if you have a drip irrigation system I think that's probably the best thing but I don't have that rainbird if you're watching sponsor me I would love to install a drip irrigation system. Fun fact, I did my internship in Stephenville with Tarleton State University. Well, I was going to Tarleton, not with Tarleton. I did my internship with Lovell Lawn and Landscape. A man named Jason. I think his name was Jason. Really nice guy. Anyway, he had a whole landscape company. So I did all of it, right? I did the mowing, the fertilizing, the maintenance, I did installing, you know, landscape plants, flowers. My favorite part of that whole experience was the irrigation side of it. I actually considered a job within irrigation. Whether that was installing irrigation systems, designing irrigation systems, all of it. Maintaining irrigation systems. I really enjoyed that part of the internship. I don't 
it, it's gonna sound bad, but I feel like it's a man's world. And as a young woman, <laughs> I was very intimidated on pursuing a career in irrigation. Getting my irrigator's license definitely crossed my mind. And here I am, finally, with the garden that I can do all things with, including irrigation. And don't you think that's not on my radar? Because it is. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna get a drip irrigation system for my in-ground stuff. So I want a drip irrigation for like all of my raised beds, my in-ground beds, my tomato beds, very specifically my tomato beds. And that, matter of fact, I may even do that this season because I wanna put a huge emphasis on tomatoes. I know I've said that before in other videos. I'm fixing to install a trellising system for my tomatoes because I'm going to prune my tomatoes. Most of my, my tomatoes. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Most of my tomatoes are indeterminate, so they're going to be huge, and I'm going to have to trellis them. So I'm going to have to come up with a system to be able to trellis my two liter tomato system. One thing I don't want to do is overhead water my tomatoes. When you water your plants, you want to water the soil. You don't want to water the actual plant because your plant is not soaking up that water from the leaves. It's soaking up the water from the root system. So you want to water the soil. Not the plant, the soil. Not the plant, the soil. If you can bottom water your seedlings, wonderful. But if you can lay that drip irrigation line right at your soil line, that right there, money. I don't think I've ever said that. But I heard someone say it once and it sounded fun. So I tried it and it, it was fun. It was fun. Anyway, that's my two cents on bottom watering. Sorry I'm yelling at you. I'll turn the volume down on this video. Husband. Moment when I'm trying to make a video. How rude. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for watching this crazy channel. And I'm sorry this channel was such a harping on you about bottom watering, but I can't stress it enough on how important it is. Try it. Try it for yourself. Grow messy. Let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bottom water. Anyway, seriously though, is that looking in the right section? Okay, see ya.